Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial on creating color schemes for infographics in Photoshop. What we're going to do in this video tutorial is have a look at Adobe Color just to see how you can grab color schemes from there. Then we're going to go ahead and create our own small color scheme for a set of infographic images. And we're going to look at creating tints and tones of a standard color. So it'll make it easier for you to identify and select colors to use for shading and highlights in your infographics. Before we get started working with tints and shades, I wanted to introduce you to Adobe Color and it's to be found at color.adobe.com and this works with Adobe CC products. So what I've done is gone into this location and I've gone into the explore option here and what I can do is type a word in here or a small phrase and look for color schemes that might match that phrase. So one of the things I was looking for earlier was cotton candy because I wanted something that was pretty colorful. And when you type your word cotton candy, what Adobe Color does is it goes and has a look at all the themes that it has in its library, which other people have created, and it returns those that have cotton candy in their title. Now, I've already saved this cotton candy sherbet one, so I'm going to go and select this one because I kind of like this, the cotton candy lust. So I'm going to click on Save. And this allows me to save it to my library, and we're going to see that in a minute inside Photoshop. But here I can select a place to save it to. So I'm just putting this in Fave Themes because that's a nice, easy place for me to save it to. But I could create different libraries if I wanted to. Perhaps if you were working on something that you needed to grab a few potential color themes for, you might want to create a new library. But I'm just going to put mine in Fave Themes and click Save. And then that's saved and I also get to see this color theme in a really big display. But really what I want to do is just go back to explore. So I'm just going to click on explore. And now I could go and look for other color schemes. So for example, I might look for beach party. And I'll get any color themes that have beach party in their title. And here are some beach party color themes. And if I wanted to save one of those, I could go ahead and do that too. Here's one here. It's um. These are all copies of Beach Party. I'm not sure where the original is. Oh, it's up here. So let's just go and click Save. I'm going to save it to my fave themes. Click Save. Then I can go back to Explore and I can do this over and over again. But we're finished with this for now. Now back in Photoshop, you can get access to those color themes by choosing Window and then Extensions and then Adobe Color Themes. Now this is Photoshop CC 2015, so this is going to work through the Adobe Photoshop CC product line. And here are my color themes on the My Themes panel. And I've got my libraries here and I can just switch to Fave Themes and I'll see all my Fave Themes, including Beach Party and Cotton Candy Lust, which I just added to my Fave Themes. Now don't let Photoshop fake you out here. If you come back into Photoshop and this is empty or you forget an error message, just close Photoshop down and restart it. And that tends to force Photoshop to have a really good look at the connection and to work out that yes, you did have some color themes and that that shouldn't be an error message and it shouldn't be empty. So now that we've got access to these color themes, let's go and see how we would create our tints and shades, for example, to create an infographic. So I'm going to choose to create a new file. I'm going to choose File and New. I'm going to make this reasonably large. It's going to be 1,000 by 1,000 pixels in size. But you would make this the size of your starting document. RGB color, and I'm going to just choose a transparent background for now. Now in this document, I want to create the color scheme colors that I'm going to use in my infographics. I find it easier to create them as an element in the Photoshop file so I can just select them whenever I need them. And I'm going to show you how you would do that as well. So I'm just going to zoom in for now. I want to get up to the top corner of this document and I want to select the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to hold shift as I drag out a very small square in my document. And into this, I'm going to put the first of my colors. Now I'm going to work with three colors and I'm going to choose three colors out of this color scheme. So I have selected the eyedropper tool. I'm just going to click on my pink to start off with. Because I have the square selection marquee visible, I'm going to press Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac to fill this square with my chosen color. 
And now I'm going to just display the layers palette so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to choose layer new, layer via copy. And that gives me a duplicate of this shape. And I'm just going to drag it down here. And I'm going to fill it with a different color. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool. I'm going to click on one of the other colors that I want to use here, this green color. I'm going to make sure that this rectangle square is selected by clicking on it with the magic wand tool and press alt backspace option delete and so there's a second starter color layer new layer via copy again i'm going to move this duplicate away from the original now i'm saying smart guides here in photoshop that are telling me when these are nicely spaced they're nice and evenly spaced and so i'm just going to use those guides to line everything up now I want my third color, so I'm going to the eyedropper tool. I'm going to select my third color, which is going to be this blue. Make sure that I have this shape selected. Click on it with the magic wand tool if necessary. Alt backspace option delete on the Mac. Now I'm going to select all these three layers and the three shapes that are on these layers. And I want to duplicate these shapes again. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key as I drag another set away. And then I'm going to drag yet another set away and just place everything neatly using these guides. Now in this panel the middle ones are going to be my colour, the ones on the left are going to be the darker shades and the ones on the right are going to be the tints. So first of all I'm going to just work out what I'm working on. So this is the tint for the blue so I'm going to call this colour 3 tint and I'm going to go and locate the shade that goes with that. Now it would be a lot easier for me to see what was going on here if I changed the view of my palette. So I'm going to click the drop down menu here and go to panel options. And what I want to do is I want to select layer bounds instead of entire document. And now it's really clear which ones are my blue colors. So this is going to be color 3 shade. Now let's go and set color 3. I'm going to make sure that I have the layer selected. And then I'm going to select on the shape. And now, because the correct blue is my foreground color, I'm going to click to open up the color picker. To create my shade of my color, what I want to do is to decrease brightness. So I'm going to work in this hue saturation brightness area. And right now, the brightness is 78. So I'm going to reduce that by quite a sizable amount. You would probably start at about 15, at least as a test. So removing 15 from this would give me 63. So I'm going to test out 63. And I think that's a pretty good shade. If I didn't think it was enough, I could go down to 60, but just keep taking a small percentage off to get a darker color. And you can see the current color and the dark color here. So it's easy for you to see whether you've got a good enough shade. So I'm just going to click OK. That now becomes my foreground color. So I can press Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac to fill that box here with that shade. And now I'm going to go to the tint and this is the color 3 tint and I'm going to go to the magic wand tool click on this square now what I want is the starting color so that's going to be the color in the square so I'm just going to get the eyedropper tool and click on this so that that is now my foreground color I'll click this to open it so to create my tint what I want to do is I want to decrease the saturation this time so the starting saturation for this color was 36 and I want a lighter version so I'm going to select the 36 and I'm going to take it down to about 26 just to test it. Well that's not light enough so I'm going to go even lower, I think about 16. And I can also increase brightness if I want to so I could take this up to about 88. We're still using the same basic hue, but we've changed the saturation and changed the brightness. So I'm going to click OK, and then Alt Backspace Option Delete to create the third of my colors here. So that's my color three. And what I'm going to do is just bring up all these boxes that relate to color three. So they're all side by side in the layers palette. It's going to make things a little bit easier. I'm going to call this color three. So now let's go and have a look at color two. So I'm just going to turn this on and off so I can see which one I'm looking at. Well, I'm looking at the tint for color two. So I'm just going to label this color two tint. I'm going to select it. I'm going to sample the color. 
I'm going to click on the color here and then I'm going to reduce the saturation probably to around 25 and I'm going to increase the brightness. I've added 20 to the brightness and just reduced the saturation by about 20 also and I've got a nice tint here. If it's not bright enough I can just take that up a little bit more. I think that is the slightly better brighter color here. It's now my foreground color alt backspace option delete on the Mac to fill that square with my color and now I'm going to go and find the other piece. Well this is color 2. It's going to move it up the layers palette here. Got color 2 tint, color 2 and that makes this one color 2 shade. So I'm going to select the layer click on the box here, go and sample the color, click here and now what we need to do is to decrease our brightness. So it's 58, I'm going to try something like about 48. That's a pretty good representation here, I'm pretty happy with that. Alt Backspace Option Delete. And I'm just going to go ahead now and finish off the pinks. So now I've selected all of my colors. What I'll do next is go to the bottom most layer here and hold the control or command key as I click to add a new layer. Now I've just seen I've still got a selection up here so I'm going to press control or command D to deselect the selection. Now I have the default colors set up here. I just press the letter D to get those. Because white is my background color, I'll press control backspace command delete on the Mac to fill this layer with white. The only other thing that I find handy when I'm creating infographics is to have the middle of the document marked out. So I'm going to add some guides. I'm going to choose View and then New Guide. I'm going to add a guide at 50% horizontal and then add a guide at 50% vertical. Well, actually I went the other way around so let's do the horizontal one. Now that I've got my guides and my colors in the document, I could even lock down these layers so that these can't move. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to lock them in place so they can't be moved and they can't be altered. So now when I go ahead and, for example, create a new layer and make a shape for my infographic start, I can click here on the eyedropper and I can sample any of these colors and then I can fill my shape with that color. And if I want to duplicate it by choosing Layer, New Layer via Copy, I'm going to use the Move tool and just move this slightly out of the way. I'm going to select this shape and I'm going to fill it with the lighter color here. You can see that being able to select these colors using the eyedropper is a lot easier than continually coming back to the swatches panel and selecting colors in here. Just find it much easier to have them visible in the document. Now because these are locked down, they're not going to move and if we didn't want to see them at any stage, we can just turn them off. So they're removable in the sense that we can just turn off the visibility of these layers, but we still have the ability to easily sample those colors. Now if you want to change your panel back, having got your colors set up, just go back into panel options and select entire document and click OK. And now your panels will look the way they did before. But what I would do is go ahead and actually save this document. So I'm just going to bring this all back. So I'm going to bring back the visibility of all of these layers and take out the two layers that I just created. So this is a really good template document. I would just go and save that using File Save As, make sure it's a PSD file and I might call that Infographic Template PSD and any time I needed to create an infographic I can just come and open this document. I've got my tints and shades already in place for my color scheme and I can go ahead and start working on the infographic elements. And of course if I needed to alter those panels it's very easy to go ahead and just alter those color schemes. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. 
and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.